Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting a like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from a throwaway account and says, brother-in-law's 36 male, husband 38 male, makes me 24 female feel uncomfortable. And I don't know how to tell my husband 30 male without them thinking, I'm homophobic. This man, 38 male, has known me, 24 female, since I started dating my husband, 30 male, a few years ago. So you can imagine that we shared a lot of moments and I consider him my family. But lately he's been treating me like I'm the new girlfriend. He's been dating his brother-in-law for a week, if you know what I mean. I gave birth 10 weeks ago and I still feel tired and every time I say that out loud when he's around, he tells me I'm overreacting. That it's been two months and that I have to stop taking advantage of the situation to use my husband. He is the one who takes care of everything in our house. He does the laundry, cooks, cleans and some nights he takes care of our daughter. But he does it because he wants to, because more than once I wanted to do those things and he told me that I should rest or things like that. The other day was my husband's birthday and I decided to bake a cake and prepare a special dinner to receive his family. And of course he had something to say about that. He started making fun of me, saying that it was time for me to get my ass off the couch and do something productive. And he doesn't say those things when my husband is around. He says them when we are alone. And I try to ignore him because I don't want problems, but I can't do that anymore. Yesterday, he sent me an article about sex after giving birth and how many times husbands cheat on their wives because they are tired and don't want to have sex. And said something like, I should pay attention and, and not let my marriage be ruined by my laziness and the truth is my husband and i had sex again a few days ago but that's not something i want to tell everyone but he assumed that because i'm too tired to do certain things or because my husband decided to take care of me and do everything i don't satisfy him i swear i can't stand him anymore i don't know why he changed or why he suddenly treats me like trash but i've had enough and i want to tell my husband but i don't know how I know I sound like a fool for not knowing how to communicate with my husband, but in the past, this man has had problems with my other brother-in-law's wife because he accused her of being homophobic. And since then, everyone took his side and hated her since then. And I don't want that. I honestly don't care if he's gay or whatever he wants to be. I just want him to leave me alone because I've been struggling a lot with guilt for letting my husband do everything and listening to things he says hurt me because they make me feel like I'm being a burden on my husband. And that he will soon get tired of me. My fear of being accused of being homophobic has to do with the fact that I come from a religious family and I'm sure that if I say something about him everyone will take it the wrong way. But how can I face this? Confronting this man is not an option because he's not a peaceful person. And I don't want him to yell at me or accuse me of things that I am not so what can I do? How can I talk about this with my husband or my brother-in-law? I honestly don't know if he knows how his husband is treating me so i thought it would be a good idea to talk to him too and i'm sure we're going to get some good ways to approach this within the comments but i can only feel that you just need to speak to your husband about this because the alternative is keeping it in or which isn't healthy because he's just going to keep saying this stuff behind everyone's backs i spotted this comment below of a way of approaching it from i kill plants too who says hey husband can we talk about something brother-in-law's husband said xyz to me and i want to make sure these aren't issues for you he has me feeling insecure because of this article he sent me about husbands cheating on their wives after giving birth i know it's silly but i need to get it off my chest so i can focus on us and the new baby and i think it'd be really interesting to see his reaction to that you know you'd think he'd be infuriated but Seriously, I want waffle says, hey, brother-in-law, are you ready to say that again? In front of my husband? No? Then shut your pie hole because our life is none of your business. You really need to tell your husband what brother-in-law is saying, hun. There's no need to carry this shit all on your own. I am no king says I would publicly shame him. Brother-in-law, why are you sending me articles about sex and husbands cheating on their wives after they give birth? Say this at a big family dinner in front of everyone. You need to stop ignoring this and get angry. You aren't mad at him for being gay. You're angry at him for being a sexist asshole. Hard and short says record him next time you see him and get him to really explain himself. Like go full. What do you mean by that? So there's no room for misinterpretation. And tell your husband that brother-in-law has recently been saying XYZ. 
If he doesn't believe you or says it probably isn't that bad, then show the article he texts you. And if he still isesn't believing you, that's when you show the recording. And Breath of Ari says, I think you should just tell your husband that you're uncomfortable and why. It's not homophobic to be made uncomfortable by someone constantly judging you as a new mother, commenting on your sex life and being misogynistic. Being part of a minority group doesn't mean you are not an asshole. I'm wondering if it's because he's jealous that you have a baby now if he wants kids too. I feel like it's very common for men to underestimate the struggles of new motherhood. You don't deserve to be subjected to that type of judgment while you're trying to recover from birth and adjust to life with a baby. The OP did come in to update the post and they said after posting I decided to take the advice of one of the people who commented on the original post and left my phone near my husband with a chat open for him to see. He saw the chat and asked me since when did I let his brother-in-law send me those kind of things. I told him that I never let him and he simply started giving me advice without me asking for it. I told him everything and fortunately he believed me and said that he would talk to his brother about his husband's behavior. That same day he called his brother and they had a long talk. Of course, his husband was hysterical and told him a bunch of lies about me. According to him, ever since my daughter was born, I haven't stopped bragging about motherhood because I know that he can't have children. I always tried to make him feel less for being a man and things like that that are not true. Of course, the majority of the family believed him because they know that I come from a very religious family and that they believe that's why I'm capable of doing those things he accused me of. They always believe everything he says because he and my husband's brother have been a couple since high school and suffered a lot of homophobia and they're constantly trying to protect them from it, even if you are not homophobic. I would like to say that he hates me and thus justify him, but it was always like that. A while ago, he had a fight with his older brother's wife and also accused her of being homophobic. He had a fight because he told her children that they should like boys because girls aren't fun and things like that. Then she told him not to tell them that everyone would decide if they like girls or boys in the future and he got offended and he accused her of being homophobic because according to him she would not have said that if he had told her children that they should like girls when he accused her of that the whole family turned their backs on her and no one talks to her and now they're doing the same thing to me and as much as i try not to care i just can't i've known his family since i was a teenager and i considered them family i don't understand why they would do this to me when i need them most and the worst part is that my husband has been acting weird since then and treats me differently like he's avoiding me. And it terrifies me to think that maybe he will end up believing him. That's it. There's nothing more to say. Some people on the back of this suggesting that OP should go nuclear and like send the whole family what he's been sending you in terms of those articles and things like that. Other people saying that you should still try to record what he says. Other people suggesting, you know, this family just has a toxic dynamic and you should cut them out whilst getting some kind of therapy with your husband. But what do you guys make of this situation? What would you suggest to OP? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. Now, our next one, I'll give you a little warning before we get into this one. It's not a massive drama-based story or anything like that. It's just a day-to-day -day experience. But someone suggested it and the title had me thinking, oh, a little bit of neighbor drama maybe. It's from the almighty Lycan who says, do you have experiences with neighbors getting addicted to your eggs? I was like, what? <laughs> Sounds exciting. <laughs> oh, shut up, Mark. I have five buckeye hens and one rooster who on paper... Due to work, I'm not really home enough to do a count. Give me about two dozen eggs a week. Now, when I'm out of town, that quickly leads to an excess of eggs in the fridge, so I make sure my house eats the most recently laid because of fruits of my labor, and anything older is fair game for friends, family, neighbors to buy. About a month ago, the one guy who owns the junkyard by my house bought three dozen and ate them all within a week. He kept coming to try and buy more, and I had to sit down and try to slowly explain he doesn't speak much English, that he bought all the extra eggs that were available, so I'll need some time to get extras again. His response is that his wife doesn't like the taste of grocery store eggs anymore and only wants the ones from my hens. How good to hear that there's a noticeable difference in quality from someone else. Fast forward to today. He's seen the girlfriend collecting eggs from the coop for her breakfast. Tried to buy the three eggs in her hand on the spot, along with trying to call her a liar when she said there weren't any extras to sell at the moment. Now, on top of building another coop and checking on new hens I purchased, I also have to play politician over eggs. 
anyone have similar experiences with selling produce slash eggs etc to neighbors and whatnot or did i make a mysterious feed blend that turns people into crackheads <laughs> edit for newcomers of this post there was no trespassing he was working on the roof of the office and called down not trespassing or harassing being as i'm not home i don't know the tone of the conversation so playing politician means figuring out if it was said jokingly out of frustration or legitimately upset Worst comes about, I'll be informing him of either a price increase for priority customers or that I'll only do business with his wife or brother to make sure cooler heads are the only ones interacting. It is plausible that they're selling my eggs for a profit. However, I'm really only selling older eggs so that the birds can pay for their own feed. As far as I'm concerned, I'm getting what I asked for with zero complaints about the cost. So unless we go through another egg shortage, I'm fine with what I'm getting since I'm not focused on turning a profit. My homesteading is just like my guns, hunting, fishing hobby. It's a mental write-off slash easy way to justify how much things cost because it's busy work to keep me active and it puts food in the fridge so it's beneficial. Duck eggs to me taste like chicken eggs. However, I've only eaten them scrambled with cheese and salt cured. Salt cured yolks are delicious with noodles, almost had a cheesy flavor. As far as scrambled, the eggs just have thicker and firmer texture. So good either way getting hungry now this post is more of asking about similar experiences seeing as this is the first interaction and i wasn't home to get a feel for the tone of the conversation it's more of a people are crazy and not a horror story post but if that changes i'll update conveniently i got more hens four barred plymouth two rir and what i believe to be a white plymouth mostly because the girlfriend and i eat half a dozen eggs a day for breakfast when i'm home and my bucket girls only gift me with three to four total eggs a day so they wouldn't be able to keep up with just us. Not adding the roommate's intake and anyone I've sold to. Now, I'm not sure it's like everywhere, but I've seen like people that sell eggs on the side of the road. They have like, sometimes I drive past a well, few houses really, and they have like these like miniature huts that's built outside their house and they put eggs in the egg boxes there and, and they just say eggs for sale. I've never been to one. I've always sort of been tempted to stop and it sounds stupid, but I'm just worried about the etiquette of it, <laughs> you know? Because, you know, fresh eggs aren't nicer, it's got to be said. But anyway, one relevant comment on this one said, you need to reevaluate how many people with no stake in this situation are telling you that your neighbor's behavior is concerning. Opie says, I do not feel a need to be concerned just yet because I know the girlfriend has a tendency to be a little overdramatic about some things. Events were listed exactly as she said it. And because there is a language barrier which might have added to how things sounded. When I get back home and talk to them to make sure everyone understands, my household needs comes before theirs. Previous time, he's seen me collecting eggs and asked if there were any eggs. There's never been an interaction close to that, hence me treating it as a, huh, that's weird situation right now. And yeah, we do have an update, which we're going to cover right now. And my sort of thoughts is going to be to do with the language barrier, but not totally sure, which you'll find out. Maybe this person is addicted to eggs. <laughs> so I made it home a little bit early. And sure enough, that guy was up on the roof when I went out to check on the birds and get everyone fed and watered. I told him to give me a moment so I could continue with my morning routine and went into the junkyard's office to talk to his brother who speaks better English. But everyone's concerns of a hostile situation and harassment were valid. I went in neutrally to try and see if it was legitimately something to worry about or a misunderstanding because of a language barrier. The result is that it indeed was a misunderstanding. From what I was told, it is four households that have been buying eggs when they're available, even though I've only met the two brothers which explains them burning through so many eggs so quickly. I was also informed that they buy fresh eggs off a few other people. However, since my house sits right behind the junkyard, it is simply just more convenient for them to purchase from me. The misunderstanding was when I said no extra eggs available, that we had eggs and we're just selling to other people, which I said is my right and whatnot, but it all got cleared up and I informed them that we also eat about half a dozen eggs per day for breakfast when I'm in town. And that with winter time soon approaching, They'd have to find another source because my hens would slow down or completely stop laying. I try to be patient and clear things up if there's any misunderstanding instead of cutting ties with people. Homesteading is a very expensive way to live poor and you never know how the people around you can have a beneficial relationship so I always opt to be friendly at first. Seeing as I drive an old pickup, friends at a junkyard can very obviously be useful. Along with after this interaction I was given a business card to contact them as they have a concrete and roofing business as well which I feel can be very beneficial when I eventually find a place to call home and need help. 
By trade, I am an electrician, so my plan with homesteading is to be self-efficient enough to sell slash extra produce for things I don't feel like buying myself, while also being able to trade work with people to lighten the bill when I need things done. Never waste an opportunity to make friends. We're all only human, and it's borderline impossible to do everything alone. Someone comments to OP saying you have a solid character. Thanks for not escalating, as many seem to do first. OP says a reasonable level of patience has never led me astray. I knew there was a language barrier, so I figured there was just a misunderstanding. And I'm glad I was right. I really enjoy neighbor drama, even if it's low level and not very uh, exciting. <laughs> I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not. Back when I was younger, we had a, a guy who used to just buy so many chickens like they were literally running all over the estate we lived in because he bought so many and rescued them and all sorts you know i don't think it was a safe environment for the chickens but he was a wild character but anyway i'm going to turn this one to you guys you have those little boxes on the side of the road where you are well where they sell eggs <laughs> i don't know if they actually have a name or they're just like egg boxes <laughs> let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story from the am i the arsehole subreddit from any abroad 3503 and says am i the arsehole for asking my ex to cover money i lost in a taylor swift ticket scam brand new to reddit but my sister suggested i post here to get the internet's opinion i 44 female share two daughters with my ex-husband sam 46 male one of our daughters, Amy, 13 female, is a big Swifty. Like everyone else, I've been trying, unsuccessfully, to get tickets to take Amy to the Eras tour. The other day, Sam messaged Amy to say that his current wife, Liz, had a friend on Facebook who was selling tickets. Amy called me very excited, asking if we could buy the tickets. A little annoyed, he went straight to Amy instead of checking with me first, but never mind. I asked Amy to check exactly where Liz had seen the tickets for sale because I know there has been a lot of scams. Amy messaged Sam and he said it was all good because the seller wasn't a random but an actual friend of Liz's. I then called Sam and reiterated that there have been lots of Facebook scams with Swift tickets so was he sure it was legitimate? He assured me that it was fine because it was a friend of Liz's from uni who she knew well. Okay then. Liz introduced me to the seller via Facebook Messenger. And I sent the seller $1,200 by bank transfer. I also booked flights for the show. Now here is where I was admittedly a bit silly. The seller contacted me again and said I needed to transfer another $400, which should have been a red flag. But I did it because I thought this was someone Liz and Sam knew personally. Well, it was a scam. Someone had cloned Liz's friend's Facebook account. Liz messaged me to say she thought it might be a bit dodgy, but it was too late. I later found out that Liz had seen the original post on Facebook Mums Group, not posted to her friend's personal page, who she'd been connected to for years. This is really frustrating because I'd explicitly said these types of scams were happening. If I had known, I would have double-checked that they'd called the friend, not just linked up through Facebook. Sam and Liz said they felt terrible about it. Luckily, I was able to get a full refund on the flight and my bank automatically put a hold on the 1200 because it was a large transfer so I could stop that. But the bank said the additional 400 could not be refunded. I messaged Sam explaining that in the end, I lost $400 and asked that since I was acting on information from him that it was legitimate, I was wondering if he'd compensate me for the loss. To be honest, I would have been happy if he just paid for half of it. He replied with, I don't think so. I know you got scammed and that's unfortunate, but all we did was put you in touch with someone we thought had tickets. I'm pretty annoyed in that he's acting like he had no role in the loss, but maybe I'm being unreasonable since maybe I should have been more wary. But we'll start with unlikely price who says not the arsehole. It's all well and good to say that they feel terrible about it, but now that you're asking for him to cover some of the actual cost of their mistake, it's suddenly your fault, not theirs. He absolutely should cover at least some of what you lost. Also, he really should have spoken to you before Amy if you were the one paying for the tickets. He put you in a really awkward position where you were pressured to act on it. Caver says, not the arsehole. This is the fault in Sam and Liz and they should take responsibility for it. In quotes, but all we did was put you in touch with someone we thought had tickets. And then says, well, that's a lie. They didn't just put you in touch. They repeatedly said it was not a scam because it was a good friend of Liz. And Liz lied about how she heard about the tickets in the first place. Miss Susie Sunshine says, not the asshole, but I wouldn't push it further. Sam isn't going to reimburse you as he feels no responsibility for putting you in touch with a scammer. 
That sucks though. But I'd be extremely wary with Sam in the future for everything. And if he asks, just tell him that you no longer trust him because of the swift debacle where he wouldn't even cover half of the loss that was due to him setting you up with a scammer. And just a comment for that something a bit different that says everyone sucks here. Other people have already covered why your ex and his partner are the asshole. You are also the asshole for sending a stranger on Facebook $1,600 without getting any kind of genuine confirmation. Did you even meet them in person or do a video call first? All three of the adults here shared the blame for falling for this scam. What kind of message is this sending to your daughters? It would do them well if you sat them down and told them that what you did was wrong and that they should never give away money if they aren't 100% confident about it, especially not a stranger. Fucking scammers, man. They are just absolutely everywhere. I get like several phone calls a day, you know, from various call centers. My favorite thing to do is just keeep them on the line and, you know, put them on loudspeaker while I'm working and just keep them talking, you know, just keep them going through their little script and then just give them a question at the end. Just say, why do you do this? Why do you scam people? I've never had an answer yet. I think one day I might. I've been called all sorts of names for it, but <laughs> but anyway, what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much for being involved. Truly, you're amazing. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. You cheeky so-and-so. <laughs>